welcome to the course of urban planning. In today's session, we are going to look at another example of local area plan. Earlier, we had seen that the examples of local area plan include zonal plan or subsidy plan, town planning schemes, ward committee plan, coastal zone management plan, urban redevelopment plan. Today, we are we will look at the case example for urban redevelopment plan. As an example of urban redevelopment plan, we are going to look at the case of Jama Masjid precinct redevelopment prepared in 2006. Plan was prepared by Pradeep Sachdeva Design Associates for Municipal Corporation of Delhi. Accordingly, the coverage of this session will include hierarchy of land use plan in Delhi, statutory provision for zonal plan and redevelopment plan, understanding of special zone, planning methodology involved in the case, site background and analysis done as per the case study, conceptual framework proposed, proposal and development strategies involved in this case and implementation framework. Accordingly, the expected learning outcomes would be you should be able to identify the hierarchy of land, land use plan in followed in Delhi. You should be able to state the statutory provision for zonal plan and redevelopment plan in Delhi in relation to the master plan 2021. Further, you should be able to explain the special zone. You should be able to review the planning methodology involved in the redevelopment plan. You should be able to review the site background and analysis provided. Further, you should be able to review the conceptual framework uh, given in the development plan. Moreover, you should be able to list the proposal and development strategies proposed in the plan. Finally, you should be able to discuss the implementation framework proposed in the development plan here. As we had seen earlier that once the development plan is prepared, its proposal can be further implemented by preparing local area plan. Local area plan improves the implementation of the development plan it allows the realization of the development in our neighborhoods. In order to understand how the redevelopment plan improves the implementation and realization of the development plan on ground, let us briefly look at the components of the development plan of the case in context. In Delhi development plan, the land use plans could be seen mainly at three level hierarchy. First, master plan level, second, zonal plan, third, layout plans for specific development schemes within each zone. Looking at the statutory provisions for the Zonal Plan of Delhi, the Development Plan Act 1957 under Section 8 provides for preparation of zonal development plans simultaneously with the master plan or as soon as thereafter. Under the Act, zonal plan may show land use, public and semi-public facilities, utilities and services, roads, housing, recreational, industries, business, market, school, hospital, open spaces, standards of population density and various other components of development. The zonal plans are processed under section 10 of the act. Now looking at the uh, particular uh, case which we are seeing, um, the redevelopment plan, uh, the Honorable High Court of Delhi in its order dated in 21st September 2005 directed a, that a comprehensive plan for redevelopment be made for Jama Masjid and its surrounding precinct. The Municipal Corporation of Delhi was appointed as the nod nodal agency to coordinate the preparation of the redevelopment plan. An action plan for the redevelopment of the precinct was presented to and subsequently approved by the Honorable High Court of Delhi in February 2006. Therefore, the draft master plan for Zama Masjid precinct which we will see today has been subsequently prepared in accordance with the approved action plan. In this map of Delhi, we see that as per the master plan of Delhi 2021, the National Capital Territory of Delhi has been divided into 15 zones from A to H and J to P of which 8 zones are in the urban areas, 1 in the riverbed and remaining 6 in the rural area. 
The Delhi Master Plan of 2021 designates Zone A, Walled City, which is the Walled City. Zone A, uh, we see other than the Walled City, and Zone B as special area. Jama Masjid is located in Zone A. Let us see why is this zone identified as a special zone. The area in these zones have historic areas and also has special character. The wall city comprises of 16 subzones. 15 subzones are part of zone A and one subzone is part of zone C. The area of subzone varies from nearly 14 hectares to 76 hectares as you can see in the map. So we see how planning area are subdivided to bring it to a manageable scale. Now looking at the zone, it was noted that the wall city of Sahazanabad was an active urban settlement since the last 300 years. It became a dense urban fabric and Jama Masjid, the Friday mosque, acted as an urban magnet. It attracted intense economic activities and large numbers of worshippers and visitors. The mosque has been an active place of worship since its completion in 1656 and is an important religious center for the Muslim community of Delhi. Irrespective of the political and social disturbances and considerable changes in the physical structure, the zone continues to have a strong association with the religious and secular traditions of the city. Because of its significance in historic, political, social and religious landscape, the area is identified as special zone. Further, the existing scenario at the time of intervention required special intervention to integrate the area with the larger development goals and the urban fabric. It was observed that irregular and need-based infrastructure improvements and planning interventions in the area in the past has been insufficient to cater to the needs of growing numbers of users and their changing requirements. The area at the time of redevelopment master plan was prepared, was seen in poor condition and needed urgent intervention. In the image we can see Shahzanabad, the old Delhi area and the master plan area highlighted in the brown and the surrounding urban fabric in Jama Masjid at the same time. The draft master plan for Jama Masjid precinct proposed a framework for redevelopment of the public realm in the area in a manner that acknowledged its glorious history and contextualized in the present and planned for the future. So we see that how in development plan these historic places are planned to find details to meet the future need and the aspiration while nurturing the history and the culture of the place. Through integrating different types of plans at different levels. Now let us look at their planning methodology. The master plan was prepared based on the study of the area, input from the civic agencies, service infrastructure providers and the government of Delhi. Further input was also taken from expert opinion and research input was also considered. Looking at the survey involved, Collection of data on the area through photographic documentation of building and activities were done. Detail activity mapping where each and every street activity has was located and quantified on plan. Further a topographical survey was undertaken on higher basis to establish the existing site layout and levels. So we get a glimpse of how the survey could be done for the planning purpose. Further looking at how the inputs were taken, the inputs were taken from uh, different agencies. We note the agencies, Government of National Capital Territory of Delhi. Uh, then we see Municipal Corporation of Delhi was involved, Delhi Development Authority, Delhi Urban Arts Commission, Delhi Police, Traffic Police, Archaeological Survey of India, Delhi Board was also involved. Input from these all agencies helped the planning team to prepare the action plan that formed the basis for the draft master plan. We see that how input are taken from different agencies and stakeholders so that the proposed action plans are practicable 
acceptable and comes from the people, the collective process. The purpose of for the redevelopment of Darga, Sekh, Kali Mula has been prepared on the basis of direct interaction with the representatives of the concerned traders at the initial stage and at the late, later stages through uh, Waziri, involvement of Waziri, the lawyer for Delhi Waqaf Board. The Waqaf Board um, have been providing inputs and review, reviewing the planning process. Where possible, the planning team has also interacted with the project affected people to ascertain their requirements. Further, we see that details to capture the urban infrastructure services were taken and these information were taken from Delhi Jal Board for water supply and sewerage, uh, BSES Yamuna Power Limited for water supply, Bharat Sanchar Nigam Limited for telephone services. So, we see various sources for the secondary data for the planning process. Further, we see expert opinion was uh, taken. So, we see how different layers of urban fabric can are taken care of and how different people are involved uh, to ha have those, those understanding and to make those interventions and integration for the proposed plan. As we had seen earlier that the local area plan in its very first stage requires systematic understanding of site background through data analysis and interpretation. We also saw that in their uh, planning methodology, the survey was the first thing uh, which they had undertaken. So, we see what all was surveyed and how it was done. In the redevelopment master plan proposal, the evolution of urban fabric was looked into in three phases from period 1650 to 1857, from 1857 to 1970s and 1970 onwards. In the period from 1650 to 1857, the wall city of Shahzanabad, which is the old Delhi, was built by the Mughal emperor uh, Shah Zahan in mid 17th century AD. The red fort was the political center of the city and the Jama Masjid its religious and social core. A dense urban fabric filled the space between the red fort and the Jama Masjid. The eastern gate of the mosque, the Shahi Darwaza meant exclusively for the emperor was linked to the Delhi Darwaza of the red fort through the Khas Bazaar and Salaluddin Chowk. In the period 1857, to 1970, we see that uh, there was an uprising of 1857. Following that, the British cleared the area between the Red Fort and Jama Masjid as a security measure, creating a large open space called Edward Park. A thriving bazaar developed in the open space around the mosque. Following partition, we see that the population of the old Delhi further increased to more than double. The bazaar around the Jama Masjid grew to accommodate over 500 stalls by 1970s. From 1970 onwards, we see that under the Jama Masjid Community Square Plan of Delhi Master Plan proposed clearance of the area surrounding the mosque. Modern six-storied mixed-use buildings were to be constructed on sites and rear of the mosque. In November 1975, the bazaar around the Jama Masjid was cleared to implement this plan. The master plan itself proved to be unenforceable. Following massive protests, the displaced bazaar was re-established in the newly constructed Mina Bazaar complex built on the western edge of Edward Park at the foot of Jama Masjid. Apart from Meena Bazaar, Edward Park was subdivided many times since independence to accommodate Subhash Park, Urdu Park, the Maulana Abul Kalam Azad Mazar. We see that while reviewing the context, the usage analysis was done for daytime for all 14 blocks within redevelopment master plan area. Detail mapping was done for kind of activities in the place such as kind of shops, workshops, um, handcraft, display table, rickshaw, tent hawkers, sitting hawkers, rary hawkers, two wheelers, pedestrians, water trolley, 
auto rickshaw, van, bicycle, cars, bus, trucks, jeeps and so on. So as we can see here in the uh, use anal usage analysis at the day time, uh, the uh, details have been provided. Further we see that uh, detailed mapping was done for night time for all the 14 blocks. You may have noticed that compared to perspective plan, regional plan and development plan how the details of observation changes. Furthermore, detailed analysis and mapping was done of roads. Here we see analysis of Subhash Mark. If you look at the legend indicated in the map, they observed and mapped range of vehicles including bus, car, the Fat Fat Seva, auto rickshaw, motorcycle, bicycle, cycle rickshaw, pish card and pavement vendors. In the process, the team further analyzed the Mina Bazaar in the vicinity. Further, they looked into the existing urban infrastructure services including telephone services, water supply, sewerage, electricity. We can see through the range of drawings prepared and presented in the master plan document. So, we saw range of analysis undertaken and the thematic maps prepared in the process of studying the master plan area. So, based on the existing site background and agency and stakeholders participation, the conceptual framework of the redevelopment master plan was prepared. So, now let us look at the proposed conceptual framework for the redevelopment plan. The major decision involved including restriction of vehicular movement to peripheral street network and Subhash Marg creating pedestrian zone in the central area, development of plazas and green spaces, consolidating open spaces, creation of cycle lanes on both sides of the Subhash Marg and on the inner side of the peripheral street network. The collective decision was to restore the historic routes, to develop the Khas Bazaar route linking Jama Masjid to Delhi Darwaza of Red Fort to re-establish circumambulatory route around Jama Masjid, the pedestrian path between gate number 2 and gate number 3 was planned. Multiple pedestrian routes were proposed to increase permeability and connectivity across the area. The collective decision was made to extend the Jama Masjid ground to include Maulana, Shaukat Ali Park and open spaces in front of gate number 2 to increase holding capacity of mosque. Further, they proposed to relocate Mina Bazaar to the northern end of the area. Proposal was made to provide multi-level underground parking beneath Subhash Park. The intention was to provide parking to accommodate tourist buses and to connect the pedestrian spine linking Jama Masjid and Red Fort. Further plans were made to locate a tourist interpretation center of the pedestrian spine. Further, the decision was made to increase the access and restore Maulana Abdul Kalam Azad Mazar. Similarly, Dargah Sheikh Kalimullah was to be restored and uh, its surrounding shops were to be redeveloped. So, we saw how the conceptual framework was proposed for redevelopment of Jama Masjid. You may also reconnect with uh, the contents of the local area plan which we had seen earlier. Moving forward, we see that the conceptual framework for the redevelopment of Jama Masjid was further detailed down into proposal and development strategies. The proposal and development strategies clearly tell us what has to be done on ground, where and how. The areas identified for the interventions were first the Jama Masjid building. A separate independent conservation plan was prepared for the Jama Masjid building. Second, we see the Jama Masjid grounds. Uh, this consists of the enclosed land surrounding the mosque building. Third, we see the uh, rest of the area, the Edward Park area between Jama Masjid and Subhash Marg. This consists of Mina Bazaar. Maulana Abdul Kalam Azad Mazar, Urdu Park, Delhi Jal Board Reservoirs, Subhash Park, Dangal Ground, Darga Sheikh, Kali Mullah, the now demolished Indra and Court Market. 
So, we can see it all of them in this plan here. Further, we see that interventions were planned in the peripheral road network connecting the area to Netaji Subhash Mark starting at the uh, pedestrian overbridge at Darya Ganj intersection continuing through Urdu Bazaar, Chauri Bazaar, uh, Dariba Kalan and meeting Netaji Subhash Marg at parade ground. The supporting arterial road network consisting of Netaji Subhash Marg from Darja Ganj intersection to Lothian Bridge. So, we saw as per the redevelopment master plan where the intervention would be done on ground. So, these were the areas where the interventions would take place. Further, we see key interventions which indicate exactly what will be done in these identified areas for interventions. The master plan proposed key interventions which included movement networks, parking, restructuring land use, landscape and planting, urban infrastructure services, water supply, sewerage system, storm water drainage, electricity supply, communication networks, solid waste management, lighting, visual corridor and skylines, conservation of built heritage, public amenities, to, uh, tourism infrastructure. So, you see the range of interventions which have been uh, proposed and to the detail which the uh, interventions are being done. In the master plan drawing here, we see that the key interventions and the specific areas where these interventions will be undertaken are indicated. We further see that the redevelopment master plan provides the cross section uh, view and area statement to communicate the proposal. So, we also see that what kind of sets of drawings which are given in the uh, redevelopment master plan document. Further, we see that in the proposal, in addition to the conservation of the mosque, that the amenities are also provided for the worshippers who come to pray as well. Because the Jama Masjid is not just a historic building, but an active place of worship visited by large number of worshippers. In the redevelopment master plan, following facilities are proposed for worshippers within the Jama Masjid grounds. A ramp was to be constructed at gate number 3 to provide access for the disabled to the mosque. Parking for the disabled was to be provided at gate number 3. Further a ramp to connect the lower plaza to gate number 2. The redesigning of entrance to accommodate current security requirements such as metal detectors, checking areas in an aesthetic manner, extension of the ground in front of the mosque to incorporate the Maulana Shaukat Ali Park and the unused green spaces. This will accommodate the large number of worshippers spilling out of the mosque on Friday and festivals. This plan indicates the proposed interventions for the east entry of Jama Masjid. The Meena Bazaar was constructed in 1976 to accommodate stalls displaced by 1975 clearance of the area. It extended uh, right across the site from Urdu Bazaar on the south to parade ground on the north. The shops sold goods ranging from clothes and religious objects to junk dealers. The quality of construction was poor and temporary extensions were seen beyond the so shop spaces. Circulation spaces were encroached on and the conditions as observed indicated that the market poses, posed a serious safety threat to those in the area. Further, the unpleasant roof of the Mina Bazaar was seen to damage the view of Maulana Abdul Kalam Azad Mazar and the red fort from the Jama Masjid. It was proposed that the existing Mina Bazaar will be constructed outside the Jama Masjid frontage on the northern part of the site opposite parade ground. The new Mina Bazaar was to be built on two levels and have like nearly uh, or above 500 shops. The upper levels to be on the same level as the peripheral road opposite parade ground while the lower level to be on the same level as the lower plaza. We see such uh, similar proposals were made uh, regarding how the uh, green vaulted roofs will be constructed and how the plantation on the roof would be done. 
The Dargah Sheikh Kalimullah is located on Subhash Marg opposite the Delhi Gate on the Red Fort. While the Dargah itself dates from the Mughal period, the attached mosque and the surrounding market place are more recent. In the redevelopment master plan document, the construction of the market was suggested to be ad hoc. At the places, the available passages were less than 3 feet. There was a fire incident at the time, at the time the survey was done, increasing, uh, raising concerns for safety. The market then consisted of shops selling poultry, clothes and suitcases, dhabas and restaurants and guest houses were located. The Dargah Sheikh Kalimullah area was planned to be redeveloped accommodating 97 shops arranged an inward looking courtyard. The Dargah was proposed to be renovated through ramps to give barrier free access to Dargah and so on. We can see the detailed drawings provided for the proposal. Located just across the gate, number 2 of Jama Masjid, the Maulana Abdul Kalam Mazar commemorates the life of prominent freedom fighter and great leader of India. Observations for Mazars were made and the proposals were prepared. The interventions included to restore Maulana Abul Kalam Azad Mazar and draw visitors to this space. It also included dismantling of the existing steps and replaced with a ramp linked to the plaza below to provide barrier free access to the monument. Similarly, interventions like multiple access points to Mazar and repair and restoration of the Mazar structure, landscaping of the soft areas and revitalizing the water bodies, provision of signages were proposed. Further, we see interventions done for movement network. Uh, we see that for the street network, the area were broadly divided into following zones. Subhash Mark, peripheral street network, pedestrian path. The range of users on these streets were observed to be diverse and include large motor vehicles such as buses and trucks, smaller motor vehicles such as cars and auto rickshaw, non-motorized modes such as cycle uh, rickshaws, hand carts pe and pedestrians. These users operated at diverse speeds and compete with space with not just each other but also with hawkers and vendors. The significant role of each road was observed and accordingly proposals were prepared for intervention. Provisions were also made for the parking requirements. As observations were made that there was a chronic uh, parking shortage of parking space in the area and uh, it, uh, how the arrangement was at that time including usage of ground and on street parking in the area. Accordingly, the interventions were proposed which included uh, bi-directional cycle lanes, one-way loop, restricted two-way movement in certain blocks, restriction on movement of goods to non-peak hours and plaza for transfer of goods to avoid interference with the traffic movement. Additional pedestrian provision, ramps to connect the various levels on pedestrian path retractable bollards for emergency vehicles onto the pedestrian area, restriction on on-street parking, provision for intermediate modes of public transport such as auto rickshaw, multi-storied underground parking lot, all these interventions were suggested. Further mechanism was also developed to offset the cost of the project. We further see traffic management plan for festivals. We see that interventions were also proposed to manage traffic on festivals including restricted motorized traffic within the area for short period of time during peak hours, differential parking structure, uh, free parking at remote location with shuttle service and strategies to discourage usage of private vehicles. We now see uh, how urban infrastructure services were uh, proposed, what interventions were proposed. The peripheral streets surrounding the precinct. Uh, act as a feeder for urban infrastructure services in the area. The service infrastructure was overloaded. The observation was made that it was overloaded, was in poor condition and needed to be upgraded and augmented. K 
key criteria in the design of urban infrastructure service in this area considered was an environmentally friendly approach. For water supply, the interventions included underground water supply tank of Delhi Jal, then we see water saving taps and flushing system to economize on water consumption, sewage recycling and reuse of water for flushing and irrigation. We further see proposals for landscape uh, irrigation included for uh, how to irrigate the green spaces in the area using a network of drip irrigation and spray irrigation. The system utilize much less water than conventional water system and are more efficient. We further look at how the sewage treatment and water recycling was proposed. A fully underground sewage treatment plant was proposed. A plan was prepared to use sewage generated uh, in the neighborhood as well. Likewise, we see that the proposal was also prepared for storm water drainage and rainwater harvesting. A new underground storm water drainage system was proposed for construction to collect storm water generated in the area. The storm water would be used to recharge ground water levels through recharge pits. Likewise, we see uh, for electricity uh, provision. Uh, an underground common utility duct was proposed for electricity and telephone cable on the periphery, peripheral street. Further, we see for solid waste management. Uh, the observation during the survey was made that at the, t uh, the garbage was collected by sanitation workers using wheel burrows. There was no segregation of garbage done. It was proposed that the dustbin be fixed all over the precinct. It was also recommended that organic waste be separated at the source and be used for making compost that can be used for maintenance of plantation in the area. The street and the environmental lighting for the uh, area was designed with the objective of creating a sense of security, improving the nighttime uh, aesthetic experience of the area, economize on energy consumption and prevent light pollution. We see that for Jama Masjid, the exterior uh, is proposed to be lit through a non-obtrusive and energy efficient lighting system. Uh, this was visualized through a combination of ground burial as well as flood lights. A specialist lighting firm would plan the lighting details. We further see key interventions which were proposed to improve the visual corridors and vistas. Clear all obstructions including unauthorized construction on the street, projecting signages and hoardings on key access routes. These include Matya Mahal Road, Chauri Bazaar and uh, peripheral street network. All structures, streets and level differences proposed within the plazas were to have their tops below the Jama Masjid plinth so that the view of red fort uh, from the Jama Masjid's front steps. Meena Bazaar during the survey was visual aberration marring the view of the red fort from the front steps of Jama Masjid. The bazaar was proposed to be demolished away from the Jama Masjid frontage on one side of the site. Further looking at the conservation of the built heritage, what uh, proposals were made, it was recommended that uh, uh, it was important to involve an institution with expertise in the subject of heritage conservation such as intact to take care of the uh, conservation of the built heritage. We further see as per the survey large number of people worked and visited the area. They required toilets, drinking water, public telephones and assistance booths. It was proposed that these amenities be consolidated in public convenience blocks that would be distributed all over the area. The advantage of the system was that was easier to monitor and manage these facilities and uh, gave more security to the users. Likewise, we see uh, further that as per the survey, the Red Fort and Jama Masjid were visited by lakhs of tourists every year. The tourism sector supported a number of livelihoods in the area and also stimulated the local trade. So, therefore, an interpretation center for the tourist was proposed in front of the Mina Bazaar on the North Plaza. The interpretation center 
would cater to not just the precinct but all the Shahzanabad area. The interpretation center would contain an exhibition space, tourist information center, a souvenir shop, public toilet, food courts to serve the renowned cuisine of old Delhi and so on. Further the guidelines were developed to control the prolification of commercial signage in the area. Likewise we see keeping in view the large number of users and visitors expected to use the area as well as the complex and varied activity at different times of the year, it was proposed to have a rugged and easy to maintain planting. Now looking at the proposal made for implementation of the redevelopment master plan, for any master plan it is important to have a good understanding of how that proposal is going to be implemented. Looking at the severe constraints of the administrative framework for implementation in the uh, plan it was proposed that a special purpose vehicle SPV would be set up for the implementation of the project. Private investment was proposed to be brought into the project against the projected earnings from the shops, parkings and advertising over a fixed number of years. The government was suggested to subsidize the deficit that cannot be recovered from the operations and maintenance activities while reducing the dependency on the government funds. Investment uh, by direct beneficiaries was also suggested in the plan. Further, we see that uh, after the uh, draft uh, proposal, post draft steps were to be followed which involved approval of the draft master plan by the government of Delhi, public and expert consultation where you and me would give uh, the feedback, a finalization of the implementation strategy, how it is really going to be implemented on ground, how the resources will be mobilized for this redevelopment and then synchronization of master plan with the other interventions in Shahzanabad. Further, the environmental impact assessment would be undertaken finalization of the master plan would be done and then it would uh, further other activities like obtaining approvals and sanctions from the required civic agencies would be processed. Preparation of the DPRs would be done following this, now you can connect like how the architectural work would come in. Uh, tendering of the project would be done and construction on site will be done. So we see that how uh, the uh, Redevelop, urban redevelopment plan helps us uh, to connect the larger goals in the development plan uh, with the zonal plan and then bring it on ground. And the level of details what are involved in it and the kind of surveys and kind of uh, work which are done in this uh, particular plan and how it is integrated with the larger goal. So summarizing what we saw uh, in this particular session, we saw the hierarchy of land use plan which is followed in Delhi. We also saw the statutory provision for the zonal plan and the redevelopment plan. We try to understand uh, how these special zones are identified, what planning methodologies were involved in this particular case. We uh, also saw how the site background and analysis was done for the redevelopment uh, uh, plan. We also saw the conceptual framework involved, how it was uh, uh, created and what was created in the conceptual framework. We further saw what kind of proposal and development strategies were uh, uh, prepared and then also the kind of implementation framework which was suggested and the of uh, what further steps will be followed after this particular stage. So that was what we covered today in this particular session. I hope it helped you to understand the different levels of plans. Today we saw a particular uh, type of plan and how it connects to the different level of plans and what it constitute. So we used the following references, so we used the URDPFI guideline and then the Jama Masjid Precinct Redevelopment Plan today. Our coverage was limited with the scope to make you aware of the topic. There are enormous readings and movies available to explore. Few are suggested here. This is not an extensive list. You may feel free to suggest more from your experience. Please feel free to ask questions. Let us know about your concerns you have. Do share your opinion, experiences 
and suggestions. Looking forward to interacting and co-learning with you while exploring cities and urban planning. So uh, that was uh, today's uh, work. Uh, thank you.